you're ready to pick up your brand new Tesla. What's the delivery experience like? What do you need to check for? And what's one important item that you must do? Find out in this video. G'day, my name's Chris and I cover from an Australian perspective things like electric vehicles and more. If you're new here, please subscribe, it generally helps the channel and hang around to the end where you can hear how you can actually hire my Tesla. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering so much detail. I would highly recommend you watch all of it. I have used chapter markers because the first bit's about insurance, which is critically important, let's face it. But nonetheless, you might have that sorted and you wanna skip it. So please do use them. But I would recommend, yeah, hanging around to the very end because there's a few very important tips at the end that you must absolutely do. All right, let's kick it off now with insurance. And look, everyone, and the situation is very different. So I'm gonna just do some blanket statement stuff here because if you read the online forums, someone will say that, oh my God, you're crazy for paying that much money or how did you get that much? Um, why are you paying so little for your insurance? And, it, and it's multifactorial and things like where you live, your age, driving history, claim history, type of vehicle you're buying. The more expensive it is, the more you're gonna be paying an in insurance. The number of kilometers you drive per year and also what your rating is. So if you're a rating one and you've had no claims in the last three to five years, awesome. If you're the other type of rating one driver who puts a claim in every year for little minor things, you're gonna be paying a lot more. You get the idea. And when we're thinking about Teslas, that glass, there's so much of it. You, you're gonna to need to be thinking about and putting that in your insurance coverage, yeah? Also, when you add on like enhanced autopilot or FSD, that's like a five and $10,000 option in Australia right now. If the car is unfortunately written off and I hope you're okay, um, th that's gone. You don't ever get that back. It's actually with the vehicle. It doesn't stay with you. It's not software that, you know, you, you, like on the phone, on an app, no. It's actually associated with the car. So don't do market value in that situation. Do agreed value. So here are my tips. First up, investigate with your insurance company who you're currently with, whether or not they do discounts for multi-policy holders. Uh, it might be better for you, maybe, maybe not. We actually have three cars out there now. So we've got um, you know, Kia, we've got a, um, the MG ZS EV, and now we've got the Tesla Model Y. And oh, each car has got a, a, an insurance um, by three different companies. And the reason for that is, that lazy tax. If you stick with the same company, no matter what it might be in life, mind you, more than likely just keep jacking the premiums up and up and up. So change insurance regularly. Make sure you're getting the best competitive rate. I know it sucks and it takes a lot of work doing it, but goodness, you're gonna save hundreds, even a thousand dollars. Yeah, for us, um, rating one, uh, cars under finance, got glass protection, got higher car, and market value because we only had the front windows tinted, we're gonna be paying not $2,400, which is one of the quotes I got, ow, you know, we're only paying $1,200 per year. And this is it, just by shopping around, we're saving ourselves $1,200. That's uh, quite significant. And so uh, if you're going from, let's say that Toyota Camry or that you know, $40,000, $45,000 vehicle to a Tesla Model Y or Model 3, whatever it might be, sure, it's gonna cost you more insurance. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you got the right coverage for you. All right, next up, the delivery experience. And on the day, make sure that you've already created an account with Tesla and you provided them with your credit card details. That's gonna cover things like supercharger payments and also in-car payments for, well, if you opt for it, enhanced autopilot or uh, full self-driving. By doing this, you actually have a swift, seamless delivery experience. And it's the main way Tesla actually asks you to accept delivery of your vehicle and help you set up your phone key for later on. In Mulgrave, and look, I didn't film this first section, by the way, at check-in. All they asked for was to see my driver's license and then for me to jump into my app, go over to my account screen, accept delivery, which kind of seems counterintuitive, mind you, but you do. And as soon as you've done that, you go back to the app and there's the car, everything complete like the normal experience. In there, you'll see the VIN number and all the controls for it and later on, how to set up the phone key. So yeah. Then I was escorted 
to the actual car with one of the Tesla delivery specialists and her lovely dog. And I got a great little picture of it uh, for you know the Twitter sphere because that's a thing on Twitter, I believe, where people put the pups in the frunk. Um, is this cute? I, I think it's cute. Yeah, it, it's cute. All right, I give it a big tick. The next thing that occurred was the delivery specialist asked if I need an introduction and training on the vehicle, to which I said, no, thank you very much. I'm all good. I've got experience with Teslas before. And look, if you know my channel, you know full well that I've driven Teslas for quite a while and also a lot of other electric vehicles. I'm really fortunate in this space where, you know, car companies give me loaners for a week and coming up very soon is the Kia Nero Electric uh, and then the Volvo XC40 Electric. So if you haven't subscribed, can you? <laughs> it generally does help out the channel, it really does. All right, this next section is going to be a bit of a laundry list of what you need to do. And again, I've provided a link to like a Google document so you can download this and work it through yourself. And uh, here, you want to be um, very sequential working um, sequence. So for me, I start out outside the vehicle and I work in. You might want to go from the in to the out because, well, I reckon the first thing you should do is um, do the phone key. In your app, it will say set up phone key and by tapping it, you just got to put the card that comes with the car uh, just behind the drink cup holders and then it does a little magic handshake and as quick as this, it's done. My phone is now my key to get into the car. It is Bluetooth and it doesn't always work. So Tesla recommends and I recommend, think of it like your credit card or your driver's license. Carry it with you always just in case your phone doesn't work and it will happen. You'll walk up and you've got to open the door and it doesn't open. So yeah, you can try going through the app and that's a very slow way of doing things. Or even one time I had it myself where literally the phone wasn't working. Think, uh, it wasn't this situation, but just pretend that you've got no reception. You're going to need to get the card out and do the door tap thing and then put the card down between the cup holders. So yeah, just always have it on you. After that, it's all about taking your time and doing a very careful inspection, looking for issues with paint, panels, uh, fit, finish, and those two awesome tips I'm about to tell you about. Now, here we go. Check out the paint. Is it uniform, consistent? Have they painted into those nooks and crannies? They tend to sometimes not do it very well in like this boot space here, bottom of doors where it might pull and also heck wash at the bottom of the car where the paint meets the underbody is that also uh, nice and clean are there any issues with like, the flat underbody is it intact it might have been damaged during transportation uh, on the ship or on a car carrier to check to make sure that all sections of glass don't have any chips or cracks, particularly on edges, because this is where Teslas tend to actually, well, the glass on Teslas rather, will break first. And if you skip that section about insurance, this is a bit where you gotta rewind and uh, yeah, check that section out, <laughs> okay. Moving on, are the wheels neat and tidy and with no rim rash? And let's move to the interior, looking to see how the lights actually, actually interface with the liner. Is the Alcantara clean and uh, finished all the way to the edges? Are the seats, are they clean, uniform in color and work properly? Try them out in every single direction. Configure the mirror seats and uh, to your profile. And doing this will obviously check to make sure all those electric motors are working in the, like the side mirrors and the seats and the steering wheel. Then turn on all the lights. I'm talking interior, exterior, hazards, ambient lights. Turn them all on and then do a very careful walk around the car, making sure everything's great. You've got a friend there, get them to flash the um, high beams for you whilst you're at it. My car had one issue and that was the lights were not aligned properly and I discovered that at home, but that's an easy fix you can do yourself. When you're doing that walk around, maybe think about opening up the boot to make sure again, the motors are working and it's functioning properly. Plus there's also a light on the underside of the boot there. So yeah, use that to your advantage. Move to the front. That's also got a light in it. That's also incorporated with the emergency release button. So is that working? And uh, yeah, is all the things that you expect in this car there? Um, in Australia, we're fortunate with the premium, um, like this uh, standard range or uh, rear wheel drive Model Y, and they come uh, with the premium interior. So that means the interior lighting, uh, carpet mats, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think, from memory. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, it's everything here that should be here. Check out 
panel gaps? Uh, are there any alignment issues that really concern you? Then spend some time going through all the menus and configuring everything to your liking. There's a lot to do in this space and I'll do like a separate video for first time users of Tesla at a later date. And Finally, just make sure to uh, see that all the storage areas have got liners in them and that the uh, sort of, you know, uh, it's got a spring built into it that the, um, the door opens and closes smoothly and works. Also, are the charging mats for the phones there and, you know, well, they're obviously there, but do they actually charge your phone? It's, it's really fundamental, but, you know, someone might have not clipped something properly in the factory. So what are those two big tips? And the first one to check for is the VIN number. Does it actually match the documentation that, you, that you've already previously received as also in your app? It's really unlikely you're gonna be taking away the wrong car, but if you're providing an insurance company with, let's say, oh, a VIN that you thought you were getting and then you turn up and it's actually different, Hmm, there's things to be done here, right? And the second one, and I think the most important one, is that let's say you take the car home and you discover something with it that you missed on delivery day. What do you do? All right, this is, this is very important. When you're doing these walk-arounds, all the stuff that I've already detailed, have your phone recording in video in 4K, either in this or this method. That's a weird way of holding the phone, but you get the idea. And wherever you look, your phone looks. Don't worry about the screen seeing, just record where you are looking very carefully. I was a bit distracted on my delivery day. I was excited on my delivery day, and you may well too. And you might miss something that was actually present on delivery. And it might, might be hard later on to say to Tesla, hey, there's actually a defect that I've only just noticed. And they'll say, hmm, I think you caused that damage. And you were like, mm, no, I've got video. And this is it. If there's any issues with your Tesla on delivery day, there's lots of options available to you. The first one is the delivery specialist said, if you need any help with anything or you find any issues, put your hazard lights on and we'll come over and give you some help. At the Mulgrave Delivery Center, they actually had a um, car preparation and detailing area. And there was a guy who was taking delivery of his Tesla across from me and he found an issue. And they took the car away and they went to go fix it. it might mean a 20, 30 minute wait plus some, but nonetheless, at least you're able to drive out that day and everything's done for you. They may also ask you to set up a service um, center service later on, or they might may even come out to you if that's something they can fix with one of their mobile service uh, uh, cards. Or worst case scenario, you can say this, I reject delivery of the Tesla. And in that situation, uh, they could take it away, try to rectify the issue and ask you to come back another day, or you, they may even put you to the back of the queue, another one will be made, and you take delivery at a later, later date. This, by the way, I've never known anybody who's actually done it. It's in the forums, but again, don't believe everything you read in the forums. My car was great. I didn't find any issues with it whatsoever. Paint, panel alignment, fit and finish, uh, th there was seriously no no huge is issue. The headlights, you can adjust them um, through the menu settings and that was done and dusted. And it was, it's, it's great. There's no issues with my car. And I think that's what most people will find. But unfortunately, there'll be someone on forums who might've had a bad experience three, four years ago when the Tesla Model 3, say, were just coming out and they were getting through, um, you know, that ramp up, yeah. There definitely was some issues in the past, but I think the Made in China ones particularly are actually very good. So um, yeah, just enjoy the experience, video it, at least then uh, later on, you've got something to uh, fall back on if you do have a warranty claim. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and look, if you actually want to try my Tesla Model Y, you can actually rent it out on ev.com.au. Follow the links down below and use my referral code to save on your next rental. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do subscribe, it's absolutely free. Or if you want to see behind the scenes content and get news, polls and stuff that I don't show you here on YouTube, please come and join me on Patreon where you get all this and a lot more from as little as $2.50 per month. And as per usual, you be good and you be great.